The news cycle has been really busy lately, but when the news cycle is at its busiest, that's when you got to pay attention the most. Because what happens is the government often waits on people to be caught up in these big trending news stories. They wait on people to be distracted by this flow of information that's coming in from these various news stories. And then once everyone is good and distracted, the government will release information that they're kind of in some cases obligated to release, but they don't want people really knowing about it. And they really don't want people digging into the stuff and the information that they release. We see the mainstream media do this all the time. They'll wait until there's a big news story and there's all this hype about a certain news story. And then they'll drop another news story that they don't want to gain any traction. And they kind of, you know, don't really focus on that news story at, at all. Well, you know, recently everyone's been talking about these big hurricanes. We've been talking about the aftermath of Hurricane Helene a lot on this channel. Obviously, there's an election going on. We're getting closer and closer to election day. Um, just today, it was announced that there was a possible, uh, um, possibly another attempt on Donald Trump's life. And you got this Diddy stuff going on. Listen, you got a lot of major news stories out there distracting people. And not all of these news stories are a distraction, but nevertheless, you know, people are caught up in these news stories right now. So I know that every time something like this happens and we got, you know, a plethora of news stories dominating the headlines, I know that there's always information being released behind the scenes about other important things that they don't want us to know about. So I did some digging, I did some looking around, and guess what? As we're all caught up in the election, as we're all caught up in this, we're all caught up in that, the Pentagon came out and admitted that our military bases, the U.S., here in the U.S., all of our major military bases are basically under surveillance by UFO drones. This is what the Pentagon just came out and admitted. Now, UFO drones does not mean that these are aliens. In fact, the Pentagon thinks that they come from China or Russia, but they cannot identify these drones. They don't know exactly where they come from. And the fact that they can't identify them lets you know that they obviously are using some sort of technology that we aren't familiar with, right? But apparently, these drones have been surveilling all of our military bases. And the Pentagon straight up said, and when they came out and released this info, they straight up said there's nothing we can do about it. They said that there's nothing we can do about the UFO drones that are hovering over our military bases, surveilling them, taking photos, doing Lord knows what, I would assume, maybe getting ready for some sort of attack maybe getting ready for the next big war that's going to pop off. I don't know, but let's go ahead and dive into some of this information that they don't really want us diving into. Fleets of dozens of mysterious UFO drones are surveilling America's most sensitive military sites, and the Pentagon admits it can't do much to stop the aerial intruders, according to a new report. Drones of unknown origin have been spotted flying over military bases in Virginia and Nevada over the past year, including the secret base for the Navy's elite SEAL Team 6 commando unit and Naval Station Norfolk, the world's largest naval port. Federal laws, however, prohibit the military from shooting down the drones over the potential risks to troops and civilians. Jamming their signals was also ruled out in high-level White House meetings, according to reports, over concerns that it could interfere with 911 systems, Wi-Fi, network, and commercial airliners. So, for one, right off the bat, these things are hovering over bases that we don't even know exist. They're hovering over bases that we don't even know the location of because that information's not public. So somehow, whoever has access to these drones, 
they know about bases that me and you don't even know about and we live here in America, right? But also, they say, hey, even if we try to jam these drones, we may take down our own Wi-Fi networks. We may take down our own power grid, you know, while trying to take out these drones. And they're also scared if they try to shoot them down that they may, you know, crash down on a civilian or troops or what have you. But, I mean... You, you got to be able to do something, right? You have to be able to do something. You can't just allow these things to float over you and, and, you know, collect all of this information because in the long run, whatever they're planning on doing with this information they're collecting, I'm assuming that would cost more lives than shooting down one of these drones. Now, I'm not saying they should willy-nilly shoot these things down, so people have freaking UFO drones, you know, raining all over their their communities. You you walk outside one day and the neighbor's house got hit with the UFO drone. I'm not saying that, but surely they got to come up with something, some sort of system to be able to take these things down. You can't just allow these things to just freely float over us, right? Well, wrong. That's what they've been doing. They say, hey, nothing we can do. So they just carry out business as usual as we're being spied on. That makes no sense to me, but that's what's happening, folks. But let's dive back in. The Pentagon has little recourse to halt the potential surveillance from foreign adversaries. Former U.S. Air Force General Mark Kelly was first made aware of the drone sightings in December of 2023 where officials at the Langley Air Force Base along the Virginia coast reported seeing dozens of drones flying over the base at night. The base is home to the F-22 Raptor fighter jets, one of the American military's most advanced stealth warplanes. The drones continued to appear over the course of 17 days, with officials suspecting that they might have been deployed by Russian or Chinese agents to spy on American military assets. Because snooping does not constitute an imminent threat, the military is prohibited by law from shooting down the drones. A director or a directed jamming attack also had the potential to interfere with commercial aircraft near the peak of the holiday travel season, one FAA official warned. Analog tactics were also unsuccessful as local police aiding in the investigation would lose sight of the drones during the midnight chases. The drone sightings ended on December 23rd, with officials still unsure as to where they came from and who was operating them. So, folks, they got police going on high-speed chases, chasing down the drones, trying to figure out where they're coming from. They're most likely being launched from somewhere in America, I would assume. But my thing is like, if I or if you were to fly one of our drones over a military base, they would come in and arrest us immediately. There would be no questions. They would find us very easily. No questions asked. We would be thrown in jail, right? So how are these people getting away with it? Now, obviously, I'm sure they got better equipment than maybe me or you would have. They're smarter at this stuff than me and you are. I get it, you know. I, I'm assuming these are professionals here that we're dealing with, but still, you know what I mean? It, it makes you lose confidence in our military that they can't stop this from happening. But let's dive back into the article. Given the complexity of the operation and number of drones flying in coordination, authorities had ruled out the possibility that amateur drone pilots were behind the sightings. A clue, however, arrived the following month when a Chinese student studying at the University of Minnesota was caught flying a drone near the Langley base on January 6th. The student, Feng Yun Shi, age 26, had gotten his drone stuck in a tree, which he appeared to abandon when he flew to California the following day. The drone fell from the tree the same day, finding its way to the FBI who found the drone had photographed Navy ships docked at the base. She was arrested a week later as he was about to board a one-way flight trip to China 
with prosecutors charging him with unlawfully taking photos of classified naval inst um, installations, the first such case involving a drone. Magistrate Judge Lawrence Leonard dismissed Xi's claim that he was just a student on vacation flying a drone for fun, with Xi pleading guilty to espionage charges on October 2nd. If he was a foreign agent, he would be the worst spy ever known, Xi's attorney, Xiao Ming Cheng says. Along with the incidents in Virginia, U.S. officials have confirmed that similar swarms of drones have been recently spotted near the Edwards Air Force Base in Nevada. The Defense Department has yet to publicly state who is behind these apparent surveillance drones. So they caught one person. Thank you, God. You know, someone. They caught someone. But what does this tell you, folks? This tells you that some of the people coming right across our wide open southern border are here to spy on our military. But not just that. It's not just people who are coming into our country illegally. A lot of these people are coming into our country legally. They're signing up for student programs. They're here going to college and things like that. But don't be fooled. You know, they're loyalties are still with their homelands. You know, in many cases, these people's loyalty is still with China. So they may come over here and attend class and they may act like regular members of society, but the whole time they're collecting information. And I think that's kind of what was happening here, right? So you got people here from all over the place. And America, you know, a lot of people abroad don't like America. We have made a lot of enemies. And you got people like China, they're two steps ahead of us in many ways. And they have a plan that is set out for hundreds of years in the future about how they plan on basically dominating the world in, in, in a way, if you will. So I'm not sure the links they're willing to go to, but I'm damn sure that they're willing to send people over to this country and do things like we're hearing about right now. So how often is this happening? That's what I would like to know because we're hearing about a lot of this stuff late. You know what I mean? And if this is happening at these couple of military bases, how many other military bases is this happening at? You know, are you going to tell us in four years that this was happening here, there, and there? A lot of times you got to wait years for this information to come out. So I always assume that when they tell us something, that the reality is it's actually four times worse than what they're saying. Because by the time they're telling you that we have a problem, it's already like the problem's kind of out of control. They don't come and tell you that they have a problem right when it happens. No, by the time they're telling you they have a problem, the problem's already gotten worse. That's basically how this stuff usually goes, at least from my experience covering these stories and just from my experience living on Earth, watching all of this crazy stuff play out 24-7. But anyways, with all of this other crazy stuff that's going on in the world, I thought it would be nice to give you all a quick heads up about one of the news stories that they really don't want us talking about. You know, they kind of wanted this to fly under the radar, but it caught my... <laughs> it was like a major bleep on my radar. What? UFO drones surveilling... Military bases, it sounds like a story that's right up my alley. So you all let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell, and I'll be talking to you all very soon in the next one.